Legends Drank, and as you can see, I went out and purchased myself an Alpha Trooper. It has not been modded. It is completely stock. I love this blaster even stock. I've got a clip here with four darts in it, and my favorite thing about this blaster is that it gets 30 feet ranges easily stock, and it has slam fire capability. You can't beat that. I love slam fire. I liked it in the Raider. I think it's even smoother in this. I really like this blaster. So, you can imagine, I was pretty stoked when I got this in the mail from Orange Mod Works, and this is what's inside. Inside, I have the Unleashed Performance Kit Stage 1 for the Alpha Trooper. Here's my Alpha Trooper, and I'm going to get right into it and start modding this, specifically showing you how to do it with your Orange Mod Works kit to get ultimate ranges and performance out of your Alpha Trooper. I love these stainless steel kit pieces. Here's another installation guide and advertisement for the Recon Stage 2 kit. I don't have mine in yet because they were experiencing some delays, but when it comes in I'll be sure and make a video about that. We've got some stickers. Those are awesome. I'm going to find a place for those on the blaster. A back reinforcement plate. A brand new stainless steel catch custom made for this blaster along with a new catch spring and what appears to be a really beefy new spring and it is it's very nice so without further ado I'm going to show you how to take apart a recon or a alpha trooper from this side and we'll start showing you how to replace the parts and right, so let's start over here there are five screws that hold in this plate they are all the same size, except for the two on the top are a little bit shorter. Once you do that, it butterflies off very easily, and you can deal with the rest of your blaster. All of the screws in here are this standard size right here, except for there are three smaller ones. They're located here, here, and here on the rail attachments. And then there are three larger ones in the handle, and they're at the thickest points of the handle. Then over here, there are two screws here that are just absolutely tiny. They're that size. And other than that, there are just two more main body screws in the back. Once you remove those, it slides off and you can set it aside. Then the blaster should break into two halves. I don't know why it isn't. Got a flathead screwdriver, there it goes. The only thing on this side is the clip release. And then once we get inside, we can see the internals are reasonably simple. We've got a pretty standard clip lock, which I'll be removing. It does look like there's a trigger lock, so I'll remove that as well. Then we've got the stock spring, a standard inverse plunger system, the jam door, its lock, which also needs to be removed. Actually, I may leave the jam door locked for this one. Then we've got the dart tooth, which definitely needs to stay, and the barrel. Other than that, I'm going to start breaking it down, taking out the pieces, comparing them to the Orange Mod Works kit, and then showing you where everything goes back into place. So you can see here that the plunger assembly comes out pretty easily. I left this bar attached just because it's easier to leave it attached and not fool with it. I came in with my needle nose pliers and the wire stripper on them, and I cut up here on this plastic so this lock snaps right off and that's easy to do and it makes your blaster a lot nicer and you'll be able to deprime it without firing it. You can see here that it comes with a gray o-ring and I'll teflon tape over that and then I'll pad the inside of this plunger. Hasn't been done yet. I'll show you that once it's complete. As far as the orange mod works parts go, they're very nice as always. I've already installed the plate in the back of my plunger housing system here so that's ready to go back on. You can see here the difference between the stock catch and its catch spring, which is honestly a nice catch spring, but it, it must not be tough enough. And it's open in a lot of places, and it's hollow, and it's somewhat flimsy. Here is the all stainless steel one. If you buy it now, I'm pretty sure they still have some stainless steel ones left. I'll be lubricating this before I put it back in, and I'll give you guys a quick shot of the internals. It's been soldered there and there, and these look like really nice welds. I'm very pleased with this part. The catch spring here is very tough. I like it a lot. It fits onto this notch, and I'll probably put a bead of hot glue on just to make sure everything's super stable. Here is the stock spring, which I can compress really easily. 
And then here is the orange mod work spring, which is pretty tough, and it takes a lot more force for me to compress it. So I'm going to do all of my mods to the plunger tube now, drill out that AR, Teflon tape it, re-grease everything entirely, probably lithium grease the catch, and I'll show you the internals, put it back together, and fire it for you. Alpha Trooper had a new style air restrictor in it that was really easy to take out. I've been told recently that you can tap them out with hammers. I, of course, went with my trusty Dremel bit that's really long, and that worked remarkably well. I just drilled out the two posts holding it into place, and you can see that I get a really clean shot through it. I like these new air restrictors a lot better. I've also Teflon taped the O-ring. I'm about to tape over the air release hole with E-tape, which is just as easy as using some sort of putty or epoxy or goop, and it's a whole lot. I think it looks nicer when I'm done. So I'm going to lay everything back in here and make a quick shot of that. Right, guys, it's it. really a shame that there isn't a clear or a Sonic series Alpha Trooper because I, I hate that you're not going to know that I have an Orange Mod Works kit in here once I've closed it up and put it back together, except for the performance. These steel parts look really nice in here. I've lithium greased the entire catch. I feel like it's probably not necessary, but I do it anyway, especially since with the slam fire, I'm going to be moving it up and down really fast, and I don't want it to jam on me. Everything laid back in nicely. Remember that this peg goes on the bottom of the plunger tube. There's the E-tape there, and for those of you who are wondering, that is the section of my self-adhesive craft foam that I cut out specifically to put in the back of this plunger tube. You need plunger padding in these until the Stage 2 kits come out. And with that plunger padding, I know that this will last a long time, just like my Recon, and it should perform really nicely. I'm going to seal it up, show you where I put the sticker, and it'll be ready to go. Hey guys! So I have completely finished modding my Orange Mod Works Alpha Trooper, and I've put about 20 shots through it before making this segment, and all I can say is it's incredible. It takes stock darts, and it shoots them at least 70 feet, but they're streamlined, so they go crazy. Now when I took some of, and you can see that I've loaded them, in my clip some of these halo darts that I made with the BB hot glue tips for the battle rifle it shoots those at least 80 feet with a slight angle maybe more like this is a very very nice kit you can see here that the only detailing I've done on it is on the back here I put their sticker which is their orange mod work sticker which is cool and it's yellow and it blends into the blaster nicely I ground down the entire Nerf logo and I put Orange Mod Works plus my Fang signature just because that's what this is. It's a combination of my mods to the plunger tube and the Orange Mod Works kit and it's very, very nice. If you do something like what I've done in this video, you're going to get great performance out of it. When I put in this clip, you can see it's shooting my modded darts really nicely. The slam fire still works. I'm going to slam fire the last three darts in here, which are stock. And it's just got so much power behind it now. I lucked out the way that I did the Teflon tape wrap, and I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. I did one and a half wraps of Teflon tape, put the O-ring back over it, and used a combination of lithium and silicon grease. The way I did that, it actually vacuum loads the darts as it pulls the plunger forward. And that's really nice because I'm getting just maximum range out of this with every shot. I can't express how happy I am with this kit. If you want one for yourself, all you've got to do is go to tinyurl.com slash orangemodworks. And the store is there and you can find everything, including the recon kits. But this is the Alpha Trooper kit. That link's going to be in the description below as well. I'm really pleased with it. The only other thing I have to say with this video is that if you can hear it in the background, there is a storm at my studio right now, which is why the two commissions that I'm working on, which are the Fang Strike Long Strike and the Batman Style Maverick, have both been delayed slightly just because the second and third coats of paint can't go on while it's raining outside, and I can't paint inside like I can at college. So thank you for watching, and check out these kits. They're really nice.